Good evening. How are you guys? It's the phenomenal Stemis here. I'm gonna be talking about something really important. Um, well, at least it's very important to me. I'm talking about hair. Talking about hair today. And I hope I have some people watching me uh, tonight. I, I would love for a, a good discussion. Um, so hopefully there will be some of you who are interested in talking about hair. It's funny, I had a nightmare last night. <laughs> I had a nightmare last night. And my nightmare was that somebody permed my hair. <laughs> somebody permed my hair and my hair was nice and long and straight. And I'm like, who did this? <laughs> you know how long I waited? I waited three years. <laughs> it was funny. I've been natural for uh, two years. Um, I did the Big Chop uh, November 4th, 2016, I believe. I'm actually going to show uh, my first picture. My, my, I think it was November 7th or something like that. It was in November um, that I that I finally went and cut off my straight ends. Um, you see, I've had a love-hate relationship with um, relaxer for a long time. And my first relaxer was, I think, I think I was in the third grade. So I was eight years old when, when I, I got my first relaxer. And I love me some relaxer. Um, but then the wrong day, the wrong experience, and you know, I would constantly have terrible breakage. And I remember the last one I had. Um, if you look back into my last pictures, I had beautiful uh, long hair. And I don't know, something happened. I, don't, I think the, the hairdresser put the, it in too long, or I don't know. Um, but it was a terrible breakage. And my hair cut off. Um, and it's, you know, I, I, I love my hair. It's one thing I love about my body is it's my hair, um, perm or otherwise. And I take a lot of effort, put a lot of effort into uh, the health of my hair. I'm not really into style and in profiling, uh, but the thickness of my hair matters. The health of my hair really mattered for a long time, still to this day. And so when I saw my health, hair being very unhealthy, um, I had to make a change. So, um, and it was best the best decision I've ever made. My hair is really healthy right now. Um, I'm getting used to being natural. I've never been natural. I never, I didn't learn to comb my hair natural. It's funny how much how many black women have never combed their own natural hair. They've been, ha you know, they. I learned to comb my hair as it was permed. So, but. Um, I think I'm not the only black woman that has a love-hate relationship with their hair. I think I'm not the only woman uh, that has a love-hate relationship with their hair, and even men. Um, I know a lot of men that you know were hurting when they when, they, when their hairline started to recede. Um, hair is important to people. Hair is important to people. So we're going to discuss what hair is today the science of hair all right so the first thing you see here is this uh anatomical structure of the hair you know hair hair is made up of cells you know so you learned i learned, i think if you remember last um last month in the month before we talked about a lot about cells and i talked to you about how cancer cells how how cancer cells grow uncontrollably. You know, all of our body, all of our organs and tissues, we're, they're made up of cells. And um, they're the functional unit of life. 
So we have pieces, little pieces of little cells, all, not pieces, but little pe things called cells all throughout our body that make up our every part of our body, even our hair. A lot of people think hair is um, protein. But if you look here, you'll see that there are cells. You see that? It says cortical cells. Cortical cells. Your hair is made up of several cells, and the cells have many structures that have, they're called macrofibrils, so proteins. And then those macrofibrils have filaments that have smaller fi uh, protein fibers. And then those smaller filaments, um, you know, are made up of even more protein fibers. And then here is your protein. There's your protein. All right. So your hair is made up of proteins, but it's basically made up of cells, cells that are filled with proteins, many proteins. Okay. Um, proteins are structural. They're, some of them are structural, and they form these long fibrous structures, um, and they coil and they curl. And their curling, it really depends on, you know, the, the genetics of the person who has those cells. So the cells are dead, just like your skin cells. So your cells, your cell, your skin cells, the top layer of your skin, you know how you bathe and it constantly washes off because it's made up of dead cells? Like your skin cells are made up of keratin. It's meaning it fills with keratin and then it's surrounded by keratin. And then the cells start to die. The top layer starts to die because they start to suffocate because there's no longer any oxygen coming to those cells. Cells need oxygen, uh, uh, you know, to exist. So what happens is they fill up with these proteins called keratin, uh, your keratinocytes of your skin, and they do their job, like it's a protective layer on your skin. Um, but they're dead cells nonetheless, just filled with keratin and surrounded by keratin. And those same cells um, do the same thing for your hair. Your hair is made up of keratin. It's, it's basically a bunch of cells filled with several layers of keratin that coils. So it's dead. That's why when you cut your hair, you don't feel pain. Well, I just told you my experience. It was very emotional when my hair broke off, right? I didn't feel physical play, pain. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't feel any physical pain. I felt emotional pain, but it's not living. The cells themselves are dead, but they're filled with lots of these strong, curly proteins. And so human beings have different textures of proteins depending on how the keratin coils right so it had it all begins with those cells with the little keratin in them and they coil they form bonds with themselves they bond with themselves and they coil and they curl so if there is like a a tighter curl or a, there's tight curls and then there's loose curls the hair within the proteins, the keratin proteins within the those cells of your hair, they, they either tightly coil on themselves or they don't coil as much. And it's based on genetics, right? Um, black people have these kind of curls that form uh, more of, it, it's teleology we think is maybe to form some kind of mat around our head to protect um, our ancestors from the sun, right? Our ancestors came from Africa, uh, where there's there's a high level of sunshine that can damage our skin, and so we have a protective mat called an afro around our scalp. So we're very protected from the scalp, the sun. The thinner your hair, uh, the less the less they coil with itself, the more leeway that light can get through to the scalp and damage cells. So we have curls, we have coils based on the picture I showed you before, how those proteins, they start curling and coiling on top of each other. They form bonds with themselves. 
not going to get into the chemistry of pro of proteins that much today, but just imagine them folding and folding and bonding with themselves. They form what we call a lot of hydrogen bonds. Yeah. You could actually heat up the hair and the bonds will break. Right? And that's where, you know, our the first African American female millionaire, she made millions off of black women um heating their hair. She created the hot comb. And the hot comb literally is a a a, a structure that's metal. You put it on heat and you basically comb your hair with heat. What are you doing? You're basically, you're breaking those coils. There's attractions to these coils here. There's an attraction between this coil and this coil via a lot of these bonds. Sometimes we call them disulfide bonds or hydrogen bonds. Well, when you heat it up, you break those bonds. Um, but you temporarily break those bonds. You temporarily break those bonds. So then... Uh, Garrett A. Morgan, the myth is that he, you know, he's an inventor. He didn't create hair products. He, he was an inventor. Um, he built the, the traffic light, for instance. Uh, he, I, I somehow I left that slide out. I'm sorry. Uh, but he basically, um, the, the myth is that he wiped his hands with lye. Lye is sodium hydroxide. It's a, it's a dangerous base, like strong base. You know, when my students use it in the classroom, they have to put goggles on. And that base will break the bonds as well. You leave it on too long, it'll, it'll kill the hair itself. It'll eat through the hair. Yeah. So what is the ultimate goal of many black women many black women want to take these coils that are highly bonded to themselves and turn them into these or or these not and have any coils at all either through high heat or very dangerous chemicals chemicals in which scientists require goggles that is the type of things that we're doing to our hair. All right. Oh, well, how does hair grow? How does hair grow? If you look at the hair right here, you'll see that, if you remember I told you, that's, that's the hair made up of cells. Cells that were once living, right? They once used to be over here. They're called, this is called the hair follicle. That's the hair follicle right here. And if you look, you see that it's a part of the skin. Like the same, the same cell that make your, the high upper level of your skin is the same cells that reach down here and are a part of your hair follicle. So the skin up here makes soft keratin, are filled with soft keratin, and the hair down, the hair follicle cells down here are filled with hard keratin. Okay, so, hmm. These cells start to fill with keratin and form the structure that I showed you before. I'll show it to you again, see? These cells start to fill with this protein, several versions, like they organize it into these like macrofibrils, which are made up of filaments, which are made up of these keratin proteins, right? So imagine this hair is filled with all of those cells, filled with all of those proteins, and they came originally from here. And as they started to fill with the protein, they started to suffocate and and die but at least they're still filled with the protein they're just dead cells so your hair are a bunch of dead cells filled with protein this is the shaft of your hair it's above the scalp and down here is the root of the hair 
But notice what's below this follicle. See, I told you this follicle is filled with living cells that are filling with protein and pushing inward and, cre and then they're dying as they push inward. But they're living because you can't sell, you can't create protein if you're the dead cell. You have to first be alive, create the cells, fill with the proteins, and as you start to fill with the proteins and are, and are surrounded by the proteins, then the cell will die. But the cell had to be at one point alive. And the cells that are alive are a part of what we call, call the hair follicle. So you see this hair follicle here? It's surrounded by blood vessels. So even within, there's a blood vessel right here inside. And that blood vessel is providing nutrition to the follicle. If the blood vessel is not there, right, and if it's not healthy and providing blood flow to the follicle, <coughs> these cells will die. They won't be able to make any more hair protein, and then the, the hair will fall out, right? So, there's a point, a part, point in time where the hair will leave this papilla. This is called a papilla. It's called a follicle papilla, providing nutrition to the follicle. So once that happens, the hair stops growing. That follicle has to come back down. That follicle has to come back down. You see that? It has to come back down where the blood vessel is. And the cells will come alive again and create new hair. And it will actually start to push the old hair out. That's what we call uh, shedding. Right? Shedding is natural. Mm -hmm. Shedding is a natural thing. So don't feel like you can't have hair coming out of your head. But you have to make sure that the follicle is always coming back down and getting some nutrition. If the follicle is not coming back down and getting any nutrition, ultimately the follicle will die. And if the follicle dies, this is what we call the hair follicle, basically specialized cells whose job is to create protein from within and then start to die, but at least have a lot of that protein within, and it form this structure called the hair. But they die here. They're still living cells, still reproducing and growing. Like every time the new cells start to die from this, from in the middle, these cells, the follicle cells, they reproduce themselves and they and they're alive. The follicle cells have to be kept alive. If they do not, if they are not kept alive, there will be nothing to create here. So how, how do we lose our hair? We lose our hair when the follicle dies. Look at this black woman right here. There are so many black women who are losing their hair. There are so many black women who are losing their hair. How do you lose your hair? You lose your hair from stress. Stress somehow allows that follicle to not come back down to get blood vessel uh, um, um, blood flow. Nutrition deficiency. There might be blood flow, but there's not enough nutrients in the blood. And the first thing to die would be the follicle because your nutrition is saved for your brain. Your nutrition is saved for your brain. And so unless your brain gets all the nutri nutrients it needs, it will take all the nutrients for itself and other parts of your body will die. The brain can't die. You know, the hairs can, you know, in, in theory, over time, follicles can, can reproduce themselves if they're not damaged. So what happens is if you have lack of nutrition, you save it for the brain and everybody else goes to the wayside. And the first thing to see you see is your hair. Um, hormone fluctuations. Hormones, for some reason, uh, affect uh, the follicle growth. 
and the hair does not get replaced. An unhealthy diet, um, a sedentary lifestyle, some medications, classic example, chemotherapy. Chemo chemotherapy kills cells, right, that are growing a lot. So the follicle cells grow a lot. So those cells get killed the first. And so you lose your hair because those cells can't create new cells that create hair proteins. But I'm going to talk to you about what most black women are becoming uh, bald from. They are losing their hair. They, are, they have traction alopecia. And it's due to harsh styling. So men lose their hair because of a specialized hormone, DHT, that attacks the follicle. So you see what the DHT is doing? It's attacking the follicle, and the follicle dies, and the hair. The follicle shrinks, and not, doesn't make enough hair protein, starts, so it starts to thin out, ultimately, until it dies. Female pattern baldness, uh, we're starting to see sometimes inflammation. Sometimes you have your white blood cells, sometimes the autoimmune auto disease where sometimes white blood cells start to eat the follicle and it's, it destroys the follicle. It starts to thin, that area starts to thin and the hair doesn't get created. And then the follicle dies and, and no hair ever gets created. Right? So remember, Baldness is caused because of the follicle not being healthy in some kind of way. How does harsh styling cause baldness in females? Well, if you are putting dangerous chemicals constantly, I told you for myself, from, from when I was eight years old, in, on your scalp, you're ultimately destroying the follicle. You're destroying the follicle and your hair starts to thin out until the follicle maybe even scars over and no more hair. Um, weaves and braiding are terrible because what they're doing is they're pulling, they're pulling the hair and they are causing tension onto the follicle and inflammation comes as a result and destroys the follicle. I'm even thinking sometimes these foreign agents, think about it. Anything that is foreign, anything that is foreign is dangerous. Guys, if you have any questions, this is the time to ask because if I don't see any questions, I'm gonna just going to sign off. All right, so make sure, you know, you, you ask me some questions. I would love to have a dialogue with you guys. Um, most of the alopecia is caused by traction alopecia. It's not the inflammatory kind where the white blood cells are eating away the follicle. And it's not genetic. You know, that's what the, a lot of hairdressers, that's what they do in my opinion. I mean, no, no disrespect to hairdressers, but, you know, it's like, oh, well, your mother had it, your mother's mother had it. Because our mothers were weaving our, their hair. Our mothers, like... It was not like this, you know, pre Madam C.J. Walker. Straight up. It is not genetic. Traction alopecia is because of poor uh, hair and harsh styling of our hair, whether it be through dangerous chemicals or strong, like tight pulling of our hair. And it's like, as it gets worse, the more we try to cover it. And the more we try to cover it, the more it pulls and scars over and damages more of the follicle and, and more inflammation. I was talking about foreign agents. I, I, I actually skipped over that. Foreign agents. I feel like when you put fake hair on your hair, I wonder if the white blood cells are coming to attack the foreign agent that's on your hair. So you get inflammation. But it's traction alopecia is a lot of the times because of the tight pulling of the hair, 
um, the lack of nutrition and blood flow to the to the actual hair and the follicle ultimately dying. And the only way we can stop is if we cut our losses. Like I remember when I had a terrible breakage and like, what do I do? Do I weave it? I said, no, because all of that is it's going to just make it worse. So I had to suck it up and not think about what people think. It had to, it had to embrace my natural hair. And I, so I would rather have natural hair that doesn't look, you know, professional than to constantly have to weave and cover the hair and or braid up the hair, which is which ca would cause more traction alopecia to the point where it would scar over. And once the scarring happens, once the scarring happens, that's basically saying you form a, a fibrous tissue over it and the blood flow is gone. And once the blood flow is gone, that's it. That's it. I wanted to have one of my friend, my former uh, colleagues. She was a student at Oakwood. She's a dermatologist. I'm calling for you, girl. Check your check your, your instant message. You know who you are. I would love to have a dermatologist uh, to interview on November seventeenth. Um, but like I said before, you know this is a this disease called alopecia is preventable. And it's preventable if we go natural. I'm not even going to talk about the cost uh, that it takes to constantly weave our hair. The financial cost. I'm just going to talk about the anatomical, biological cost Any questions? I see a couple of people watching. I'm just seeing you liking, but not. Any questions, guys? Talking from an ex, ex crack, creamy crack addict. I'm a creamy crack addict. And I don't even braid my hair that much because uh, I do not want to have traction alopecia pulling of my hair too much i don't I, I think you should probably if you braid your hair uh it should only be in for like three weeks so when you have those expensive like long things with me when i was to do my when i used to do my hair i used to pay money for that thing and so who's gonna pay money for this three weeks so what i do i just do the nat i braid my natural hair i might put a little couple of um uh not sew-ins, with a crochet braiding at the top, you know, a reasonable price that I know that I will only keep it in for maybe a month the most. But uh, braiding your hair up for more than three weeks is risking your scalp for traction alopecia. On top of that, not, not even just for three weeks, but the fact that you, you tightly braid your hair, because a lot of times you want to hold it, you want to, you want it to hold for long, and so the tightness of that braiding, the pulling of that hair through weaving, it is causing grave hair loss in our community. Starting to write about it. You're starting to write journal articles about it. It's the hidden disease that nobody's talking about. Take care of your scalp. Take care of your hair. Thank you. I'm the Phenomenal Stemist. Make sure you guys subscribe to my uh, YouTube page. Um, check out my podcast I'm on Apple iTunes, um, also Google Podcast, and of course, like the like the Phenomenal Stemist page. If you have any questions, I'm not gonna be. November is a short month, so I'm I won't be on unless I get somebody who's a dermatologist on the 17th. I may have a have a talk on the 17th. If not. Um, I'm going to wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you in December. Take care of that follicle.